This is Dr. Frederick looking at Module 6, Problem 2. So this is very similar to the uh, last problem that I talked about. Um, and so what, what it's basically asking you to do is to um, take a look at some data, uh, once we have oils and then we have some years. Uh, now, the, one of the first questions uh, asked by the student was, why aren't we using zero uh, for our coded year? And because it says here X is the number of years after 1981. And if we look at our data, uh, we see that we begin, uh, or years after 1980, so X is 1, okay? Uh, 1981 is 1 year after 1980. Okay, so then it wants us to do a, a linear, a quadratic, an exponential, and then... Um, this uh, second order auto regression model and so we're going to plot residuals each time we're going to compute residuals we're going to look for the uh, the standard error um, of the estimate for each model so if you want to view an example of how to do this so let's look at this problem we'll get our data here Okay, so we're first going to make our coded year. Um, uh, I don't want to do that. Uh, one, two, three. If you put three to a series and just grab it, you can do this. Let's get our data set up for coded year squared. And that's going to be equal to uh, C2 times C2. Copy that. We're copying the formula, and it changes the formula by row. Okay. Okay, then we'll do our... Uh, Uh, 10 for the oil reserves. All right. Now we're going to do uh, an auto regression. It's really just a, a question of how much the the, the uh, criterion are related to themselves because they're ordered by year and so we're going to lag them twice and to lag them just means we're going to copy them and paste them down one and the second order is to go to here all right let's cut off the excess Okay, so that's what we're going to do, and uh, so basically, let's just do our regression here. Uh, data, regression, and I usually start by including labels, but for our auto-regression, we'll take our labels out. Okay, so our X range is going to be our coded year. And our Y range is going to be our oil reserves. Okay. Now we're going to come down here, we're going to check residual and residual plots, and uh, we don't want standardized residuals for this problem, so we'll say OK. And here's our output. Alright, so let's look at what we have here. We have our X values, then we have um, our predicted values of the oil reserves, and then what those are compared to the actual values that we had. So let's just go back to sheet one and let's just copy this here. And um, 
we'll just paste that in and uh, we'll copy this now this is uh, this is what our oil reserves actually were this is what they were predicted to be based on this okay so our let's just let's just do it here uh, we, we say B17 plus B18 and you uh, put that in parentheses if you want to times observation year one now that's the same thing so we can copy and paste this formula but if we do so we're going to screw up and what we want to do is we just want to change these values here it won't let me go across the uh, let's try it again so I'm going to hit I'm going to select B17 I'm going to put an F4 F4 puts those dollar signs in there and I'm just being sloppy here so let me click okay so you see instead of B17 it's dollar B dollar 17 and I'm going to do the same thing for B18. I hit F4 now. Okay. And what that does is it says when I copy this formula, it always keeps B17 and B18. But the A25, it changes each time I go down. So this will end up with A44 or something like that. So we look at the bottom one, A44. But our... Uh, intercept and slope stayed the same. Okay, so we see that's how we got the predicted oil reserves here. And um, let's just delete that. And well, to get our residual, we just take um, our actual value and subtract our predicted value. So the residual is just our error. Okay. And we'll go down here and get all of our residuals and we'll see that they're all the same. Now, if we want to plot those uh, residuals, then we go by observation, control V, control copy, control V, okay. And uh, so then we'll just select both. How in the world did that happen? Oh, I see. Okay. So it, it changed because this is a, um, a formula. It changed the formula. And we'll just grab the actual values here. Okay. So control copy. Control V. Okay. Okay. So now we'll, we'll grab both of them together like this and insert a scatter plot and that's what this scatter plot looks like and we can compare it to the one drawn by Excel automatically we see it's the same thing to get it stretched out so it looks the same. Let's try, hold on a second. Or I could have just got rid of this. That's what the problem is. Okay. Alright, so I hope you agree that those look the same. Now here's the point is that you could uh, do all the stuff that I just did by hand. It's not hard. Um, or you could just get Excel to do it for you. Okay, so let's go back to sheet one. I, I showed you in a recent uh, lecture how to do the uh, the quadratic. Uh, so just you know, real quickly to to get your formula for regression here for the x, you're just going to put in two x's at the same time. It knows you has two predictors when you grab two rows. Okay. So, and then, you know, so it does 
that automatically gives you your regression formula. Right that little button. Let's just compare this to what we were supposed to get, 262.31. Uh, so exactly the same. Okay, so let's do the one that's hard because your book is really pretty awful about explaining this. But here's our x value. Here's our x value lagged one, meaning we dropped it one year and then we lagged two. And these are our data, okay? Nothing else are our, are our data for this problem. That's what the book ought to show you is that we're just going to use these values. And this is going to be our y value. And this is going to be our x1 and x2. Okay, and so now we've got to remember to take labels off, okay? And let's grab our y values. Take labels off. And, um, so hopefully this is right. Let's see what uh, what they got. They got uh, 97.33 plus 1.284. Right, so same thing. Okay. And uh, then there, here's the plot that you're trying to get for your second order auto regression. Now the last thing I want to show you here is, you know, just where you get, uh, you can compute these standard error values by hand or you can, you know, they're just part of what, uh, Excel gives you. All right, so we want to compute the standard error here. And there it is 66.43, 66.42. So, uh, well, 423. Four, two, three. Okay, so uh, exactly the same thing. They show you how to compute. Excel already did it for you. So you can grab that. You can just use Excel to grab uh, your um, residual values, your plots, all that sort of stuff. Very fast. So if you're taking your test, you don't need to sit down and compute all this stuff by hand. Just use Excel to do it. I hope that's helpful to you. If it's not, let me know.